I am recording this video, and I apologize for the poor quality, in the woods south of Lake Superior, incidentally where some of my creepiest stories are set. I never dreamed I'd have to resort to making a video like this, but desperate times call for desperate measures. To put it simply, I'm in serious need of money, and I'm hoping that some of my subscribers might be able to help me out. If you give me a moment, I'll explain how I got myself into my present situation, what I hope to use the money for, and how, if you feel so inclined, you might be able to help me out. A little more than a month ago, I put out a video explaining that I was taking some time off in order to fulfill some personal and professional obligations. I know that you watch my videos for the Canadian folklore, not to hear about my personal life, but as the latter is the reason for my request tonight, I ought to tell you a little about what I've been up to for the past 40-something days. Back in 2016, when I was doing research for my book Legends of the Nahani Valley, I became acquainted with a gentleman from Connecticut named Gary Mangiacopra, who would become my good friend and mentor, whose name you may recall for most of my book's acknowledgments sections. For six years, Gary and I kept regular snail mail correspondence. I would send him the occasional letter, and he would send me the occasional manila envelope filled with photocopies of old magazine articles and newspaper stories on obscure Canadian mysteries. Gary, I came to learn, was the proud owner of what I assume must be the largest collection of Fortean material in the world, Fortean being the study of unexplained phenomena. The material he sent me either inspired or served as direct sources for nearly every story in my Mysteries of Canada book series, and for many videos on this channel, including my Tales from the Great White North playlist. Almost one year ago to this day, Gary suddenly and unexpectedly died in his Connecticut home, probably from a heart attack. I only became aware of this through some detective work, precipitated by my failure to receive a Christmas card from Gary for the first time in six years. In my quest to determine exactly what had become of my friend and mentor, I ended up getting in touch with his sister on the phone, who confirmed the sad news. Near the end of our conversation, Gary's sister, who was in the process of clearing out her late brother's house, invited me to take the files from his office, which were far too many to ship. I readily agreed, and had the files transferred to a local storage locker, intending to one day make a trip out east to retrieve the material and bring it back to Canada. With the exception of a few liquid Christmas presents, and a small check accepted at my insistence, Gary refused all my attempts to reciprocate his kindness. In the spirit of the open-handed generosity which Gary always showed me, my intention was, and is, to gradually publish Gary's files online for any researcher to freely use. That accomplished, I intend to donate Gary's archive to a more suitable permanent home, where I hope it will be freely accessed by researchers for years to come. Whenever I asked Gary how I could pay him back for his generosity, he always requested that I help out his friend a collector of old treasure magazines from Oregon, who I learned had some serious financial difficulties. I ended up building a website for and advertising his service several times on this channel. What he really wanted, however, was to sell his magazine collection to someone whom he knew would take good care of it, for a fee that would mitigate his financial troubles. For about two years, he consistently asked me to buy his magazines, telling me that he sometimes woke up from nightmares in which his family had disposed of his collection after his death. In the wake of Gary's death, I decided to bite the bullet and buy the collection, chiefly for the purpose of fulfilling what proved to be Gary's dying wish. The last request of my friend and mentor, to whom I owed an enormous debt, was for me to help his friend so I did. In addition to some other very interesting and hopefully useful activities, which I hope to explain in a future video, I've spent the past month preparing to retrieve both Gary's archive from Connecticut and his magazines from Oregon. I determined that the least expensive solution was to buy a cube van and make the trips myself, and then sell the van once the journeys were made. In purchasing this collection and the cube van in which I hope to make the journeys, I completely exhausted my savings. I thought that I had enough money to get to at least Connecticut and back provided I sleep in the back of my van. What I didn't count on was mechanical bill, after mechanical bill, after mechanical bill, after mechanical bill. After a fourth unexpected breakdown, I find myself stranded in the American Midwest, in serious financial trouble. Hat in hand, I humbly ask that you help me rescue Gary Mangiacopra's archive.
and fulfill my obligation to one of the unsung heroes of Fortiano. If you'd like to help me out, you can send money to me by PayPal. My address is hammerson at hammersonpeters.com. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for considering.